All right, first off, got to get this cover off. So you've got one here, T30 in the front, T30 in the front there. And for some reason, Land Rover side at the back, just some normal Phillips screws. So you get these off. simple job to do. And this should, it says, pop off. There we go. So you will find with these back screws that they will just stay in because they've got a washer on the back and then more of a clip than a screw, just like a half turn. Okay, so now we come to the fan removal, which can be a bit of a pig on these, to be fair. Um, you can get a special spanner to do it, but um, I'm going to do it typically a bit of a redneck way with a screwdriver and a hammer and just knock the nut round. Hopefully it won't be too bad because I have had this off before when I fit a new thermostat, so hopefully, hopefully I'll come out alright. And it is normal thread on this nut, which means you're going to be undoing it like you would any normal bolt. Thread to the left. It is moving. Let's see if... Yep, there we go. Once you get it going, it will go quite well. It'll come off. I do need to fit a new fan on my one because it's got a few chunks missing out. When I went to test it one day and realised it wasn't actually working. Um, and I found that out by snapping a load of the blades off it. But not to worry. Right, we're off. Woo! So it did take about five minutes to slowly just run that thread off. But we're clear now. And... Let's see, we've now got some room. So what I'm now gonna do is find out exactly what socket we need and get a long bar. This down here is your tensioner, which is spring-loaded. So I should be able to get a bar on this, lever it across, that'll loosen off the auxiliary belt. Uh, pop that off, then we'll have a check, make sure it's the right one, which hopefully it is. Um, and then we'll pop it on. Right, I'm just going to grab a socket in a bar. Right, okay, so it's going to be a 15mm socket. Long breaker bar. Not that it's that tight to move, it's just you get a bit better leverage. Um, and then push over to the left, like so. And hopefully. It's hard for me to hold the camera than what it is to do the job, right? Hopefully, it should loosen everything off enough. Yep, now that has fallen off. I'm just gonna slowly let that go back here while I get the belt off. Run it around all that. Good. belt off. Now the reason I was replacing the belt to start with is if you can see that the cracks on the belt are quite substantial. Okay, the light. There we go. So that is just, yeah, without changing that you are asking for trouble. That is going to let you down. I'll just grab the other belt and have a little size up. Okay, so you always want to check that they're the same size belt as the 
and you try and put it on that's too long, you'll wonder why it's not tightening itself up. And then equally, if it's too short, you're going to be messing around for ages thinking, why can't I get this to fit? So stretch them out equally, a couple of screwdrivers or just with your thumbs, and they're roughly, should be exactly the same. You might find that the new one is ever so slightly smaller, just because the old one will be stretched. Right, let's get to fitting it. Oh, I'll try to get the best angle I can with the camera. It's quite awkward to see down here. So one other thing I did forget to mention is when you're checking the belt for length, make sure it's all the same as the one you've taken off. Also, you need to check the ribs on the belt to make sure it's got the same amount. This one specifically has seven. I don't know if that's the same with all of the uh, Land Rover TD5 belts. I know there's different lengths of belt because uh, I had to make sure with this one exactly what it had in regards to uh, this one's got obviously power steering, aircon, which is an optional extra, and uh, it also has the ACE system for the suspension. Although it's not actually working on this vehicle, it has got it. So, because it's got the pump on there, um, it does have to have a belt that fits it. That's all been uh, disconnected on my one, thankfully. There's more to go wrong. So, I'll just put a bit of pressure on the tensioner now, so I can wiggle this into place. So I was struggling there to get that on because it wasn't completely in the grooves on the bottom pulley. So let's make sure that every section of it is in the grooves where it should be. And then all you have to do, release the bar. And that should be it. New belt fitted. Obviously, uh, once I've got the viscous fan on and the cover and everything I'll start it up and make sure that it's all running correctly it's not squeaking it doesn't look like it's going to fall off but it's got a reasonable amount of tension in which you'd expect if you do happen to change it and uh, you release that tensioner and it's still floppy so one or two things either you haven't measured the belt properly and the one that you put on is longer or the tensioner is failing uh, and you'll need to get a new tensioner because it's, uh, otherwise it's just going to fly off. So uh, I could start it up now, but uh, I'm quite confident that it's going to be good. So I'll start it up once I've got the cover on. A right, handy little tip for you guys that I've learned. I've spun the nut up, but um, when you look at the fan, you will find that uh, there is bigger gaps, like this gap here, compared to some of the others. So it does have a series of slightly bigger spaces between some of the fan blades, which makes it a little bit easier um, when you're trying to take it off or do it up. So I've spun that up as tight as I can, sort of finger tight. And then equally just the same. Same as what I did to get it off. A screwdriver or chisel or something like that. I know there'll be people cringing at me doing this, but I'm not gonna buy a tool when I'm only gonna use it probably twice in my whole life so just knock it round so you just feel when it's tight and it's not really gonna go anymore it doesn't have to be ridiculously tight anyway that should be good all tight all right cover back on so I said before, these ones are going to stay in, they're not going anywhere. Got washers on the back. Make sure all your pipe work is clipped to where it should be. Right on the top. Yeah, about. Go 
about between quarter and a half turn to lock them in. Yep, and that's it. Check on. Yep, they're tight. Two bolts in here. So it really is an easy job to do, guys. Um, if the garage wants to charge you a silly amount for it. Most people can do this on their drive. Just a few basic tools. Uh, the belt was around 15 pounds. Uh, yeah, it was like 15.95, something like that, on eBay. It's not a ridiculous amount of money either. That's it. Job done. Just got to fire up. See how it goes. All right, let's go for a start up. No silly lights to come on. Good sign, no squeals. Cowboy hat on the dash, compulsory. Right. Looking good. Cool, job done guys. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it. Cheers.